So Lifted, you listen to the record Lifted, and at the very end of it, you get this like long kind of like opus feeling song, Let's Not Shit Ourselves. That record hangs together in a way that I just love. Like uh, there's a feel to that whole thing, it feels very communal and everything. When did Let's Not Shit Ourselves come in, come into that process? Like, was it in mind as you're writing it all? Like, if it's this big thing at the end that feels now like it has to be there. But like when you're making that record, when does that present itself as something that is that long and is that song and is placed there? Uh, that's a good question. I don't I, I can't remember, to be honest with you. Um, but I do remember like at that time, I thought it was somehow cool or I don't know I was in a phase where it was like writing a lot of verses to things like Waste of Pain and Big Picture and that song it was like I thought there was something cool about having a song with like 10 verses um it's cool but but I used to like I actually do that like I still do that like on like a lot of songs but then I just pick like the three I like the most you know which is I think also the reason that sometimes the songs might seem like disjointed, like because the topics aren't exactly, you know, connected. You know, I mean that's like uh, whatever your boy was. I was talking about soul singer and session man. It's like I do think all those verses tie into. I mean, soul singer and session man. The idea of like a soul singer being like improvisational and like singing from the heart, and a session man you know obviously being just people that are hired to play at a studio or like a wedding band or whatever they're just like going through the motions and so the whole idea is like you have this person that's capable of so much more but because of their circumstances is like trapped in this situation where they can't be themselves they can't like they can't do what they're like meant to do yeah and i think like all the Versus, like, connect to that. But again, that's, like, maybe that's me not being a good enough songwriter to, like, get people to make that connection. Or maybe it's just having, like, too weird of references that people just don't get. Because sometimes I, sometimes I write words that, like, only my friends would get the reference. You know what I mean? Like, it's such a yeah like... in, inside joke that it's, like... And I don't... So I can't blame people for not getting some of the shit because it's that's like I just it wasn't really explained or meant to be but like I don't know I like I said I like that impressionistic way of writing like in other band like other people's music I I appreciate when like something like makes me be like what are they talking about I think it's a thing that's shared that that some Jackson Brown songs share especially some really early Jackson Brown songs it's not like he's setting out to tell a a folk song story necessarily he's sort of like sending off a smattering of feelings and emotions and imagery and you get to take of it what you want to take of it you know yeah I mean I I don't know I think that that to me is more interesting than you know I mean there's something to be said for the classic kind of country like linear story song like it all makes sense, you know, but like... If you enjoyed that clip, you should check out the After the Deluge podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, we have full episodes there, as well as right here on this YouTube channel. So hit the subscribe button and maybe check out whatever's being suggested to you right here. Thanks so much.